It started raining one day and did not stop for two months. We went through every different kind of rain there is, except maybe sleet or hail. It was little tiny stinging rain sometimes, and big old fat rain at others. It came sideways or straight down, and sometimes you even see it come up from the ground. Nevertheless, we was expected to do our ship, which was mainly walking up and down hills and stuff, looking for being calm. The mother puts his hand on hers. You could stay. What an idea, a crazy, mad, wonderful idea. She looks at the strange and wonderful being she's met in the strange and wonderful place. But then, thoughts of unfinished business intrude. But I cannot. There are questions I have to answer, and things I still must do. I'll be back again before you know it. You won't remember me, says the Mad Hatter. Of course I will, replies Alice. How could I forget? His face starts to shimmer as he whispers in her ear. Fair far on Alice. Farewell. Her hair was the colour of sand. It fell to her shoulders. Something was strapped across her back, but it wasn't a big bag. At first I thought it was a miniature guitar. I found out later it was a ukulele. She did not carry a lunch tray. She did carry a large canvas bag with a life-size sunflower painted on it. The lunchroom was dead silent as she walked by. She stopped at an empty table, laid down her bag, slung the instrument across, a strap over the chair and sat down. She pulled a sandwich from her bag and started to eat. Half the lunchroom kept staring, half started buzzing. Kevin was grinning. What I tell you? I nodded. She's in 10th grade, he said. I hear she's been homeschooled tonight. Maybe that explains it, I said. Ultron goes viral. The Avengers were gathered on the roof of the Avengers Tower. Something unspeakable has happened. The internet was down. Oh no, gasped Black Widow. Captain America stepped forward. Iron Man and I will find out who is behind this. It's a cyber crime. It was a bright cold day in April. The clocks were striking 13. Winston Smith, his chin nuzzled into his breast in an effort to escape the vile wind, slipped quickly through the glass doors of Victory Mansions, though not quickly enough to prevent a swirl of gritty dust from entering along with him. But now, says the Wanceler, now that you're here, the word of the Lorax seems perfectly clear. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot Nothing is going to get better. It's not. So, catch, calls the Wanstler. He let something fall. A truffle seed is the last one of all. You're in charge of the last truffle seeds. The truffle trees is what everyone needs. Plant a new truffle, treat it with care. Give it clean water and feed it fresh air. Grow a forest, protect it from axes that hack. Then the Lorax and all of his friends may come back. You're here to learn the subtle science and exact art of potion making, he began. He spoke in Burnley more than a whisper, but he caught every word. Like Professor McGonagall, Snape had the gift of keeping the class silent without effort. As there is little foolish wand waving here, Many of you will hardly believe this is magic. I don't expect you will really understand the beauty of the softly simmering cauldron with its shimmering fumes, the delicate power of liquids that creep through human veins, bewitching the mind and snaring the senses. I can teach you how to bottle fame, brew glory, even stop her death, if you aren't as big a bunch of dunderheads as I usually have to teach. After a while, there was a knock on the studio door. McGreed opened it. A tall, thin man, his cape swirling about him, strode into the room with a dramatic gesture. He took off his wide brim hat and threw back his head. You're five minutes late, McGreet said to the man. Did you dilly, dally? You never tire of that old joke, do you, McGreet? The man said, smiling broadly at his host. 